<clears throat> Sometimes I need to get some tea. <laughs> All right. So an application of the inverse function theorem uh, for maps of surfaces is this. This is corollary to it, really. A bijection um, of surfaces in R3, M to N, uh, which is smooth and regular, has smooth inverse. In other words, a regular bijection of M and N is a diffeomorphism. So diffeomorphism, the thing that's not assumed here is smoothness of the inverse. But uh, because we get local, uh, you know, if we get the, the restriction of F um, to like little subdomains of M is smooth, um, meaning that it has smooth local coordinate representatives, well, it follows then that you can, you know, look at the uh, local coordinate representatives of the inverse and those will just be given to you in terms of those inverses of the restrictions which are smooth and hence F inverse is smooth if you if you sort through it. Um, okay so some examples some examples then of diffeomorphisms are worth looking at and I'll follow O'Neill I think his examples are really really nice so one he has is of like a, a open rectangle and the plane. Um, and I, I like O'Neill's style. I will again follow him. F of UV is uh, tangent U, tangent V. So this is F as a mapping from, say, the open interval minus pi over 2 to pi over 2 cross itself to the plane. Right. The inverse map uh, is given by the standard inverse tangent, right? So it's easy enough to see that those are inverses. And it's also easy enough to see that this mapping is um, uh, regular at each point, so the Jacobian. Uh, of f is uh, it's just going to be well in this case it's secant squared u 0 0 secant squared v and uh, you notice this time I, I don't have to calculate the Jacobian of a local coordinate representative of f because this is that kind of silly case where the coordinate representatives are just the Cartesian coordinates right so the mapping is its own um, <laughs> local coordinate representative because of the, the nature of the example which makes it particularly simple but as you can see this Jacobian uh, has rank 2 this Jacobian matrix has rank 2 uh, provided that the secant squared are not not 0 of course secant's never 0 but it's it's also not it's uh, not undefined okay so it's, it's defined certainly on the open interval from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2 uh, so this is invertible Um, the domain of F, all right? So there you go. There you have it. That's a diffeomorphism of a open rectangle and the plane. So certainly diffeomorphism has no sense of size, right? Um, <laughs> took you from something with area uh, pi squared to something with area infinity. Oops. <laughs> okay, so anyway, uh, let's see here. The Sphere with the north pole removed, diffeomorphic to the plane. That's essentially that example we were looking at before. Um, the P mapping, I think he called it, what did I call it? What that thing? Yeah, this one back here. This is this gives you the uh, diffeomorphism of the sphere modulo the north pole and the plane. Um, so whatever I was complaining about before about not having injectivity at uh, at the South Pole must be missing something. Maybe it has to do with the fact this chart doesn't cover the whole sphere at once. I'm not sure, but I definitely have regularity for every point except for the South Pole. The South Pole is still a little bit of a sticky point for me. Now O'Neill takes a different approach. He just says, he argues... Uh, Let's see, O'Neill argue here. He argues directly that the push forward of xu is equal to yu, and the push forward of xv is, is, is yv, 
and he argues that these are linearly independent, hence the push forward is injective. So I'll leave those details to you guys. Example three, I like. It's a really, really nice example. Um, a cylinder. So the cylinder is what we're going to call C over a closed curve. Closed curve just means the curve comes back to where it started. It is diffeomorphic. Uh, to the plane with a point deleted. We'll throw out the origin. And to make the cylinder, make our example simple enough, we'll, we'll look at the cylinder x squared plus y squared equals to 1. Alright? And um, the diffeomorphism Anil gives us here is f of xyz equals to e to the z uh, times xy, the vector xy. Um, again, <clears throat> to, um, well, he doesn't even really address, I don't know if he addresses the issue of smoothness directly here. I mean, there's a general principle involved here. If you have a formula for it, it's probably smooth. Um, eh, well, anyway, um, the coordinate chart so f is a mapping from the cylinder to here. So the question is like, what's a what's a coordinate chart on the cylinder? Well, we talked about that before. The coordinate chart on the cylinder would just be like what? It's it's something like uh, x of u v equal y cosine u sine u and then v, right? So if you look at f of x of u v. You get what you get e to the e to the v, and then cosine u, uh, sine u, and then quite clearly, the mapping u v to this is a smooth map. Okay. Anyway, that said, um, I almost wish I hadn't said that because it's going to confuse the uh, what I'm about to say. Yeah. Fooey. So if you don't mind, just ignore what's in orange for just a second here. Well, not wrong, but but ignore. Okay. For what follows. All right. So if we want to find the inverse map, to find the inverse of f f, what we have to do is we set f of x y z equal to u v. That's why I'm saying to ignore, because this u and v are not the same u and v as I just used up there. Right. So that means we've got u equals to e to the z times x, and we've got v is equal to e to the z times y. And we also happen to know that x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. That's actually really important to derive the formula, which uh, O'Neill does shortly here. I will start this again. Alright, continuing. I'll take a phone call there. So x squared plus y squared equals to 1, but on the other hand, x is equal to u e to the minus z, and y is equal to v e to the minus z, right? So you put those together, and we got u squared plus v squared equals e to the 2z, right? If I move the e to the z to the other side. And so that gives me that z, or, well, it gives me 2z is equal to the natural log of u squared plus v squared, which then gives me z is equal to the natural log of the square root of u squared plus v squared. And likewise, um, x is equal to, let's see here, Oh, so by the way, this is also giving me e to the z is the square root of u squared plus v squared. And so like x is equal to um, u over the square root of u squared plus v squared. And y is equal to v over the square root of u squared plus v squared. 
And so there you go. Collectively, these define um, F inverse of UV. And so this gives us a, uh, a diffeomorphism of the cylinder to, um, to the plane with a point removed. Hmm. Which perhaps is surprising. So the point is, the notion of diffeomorphism is rather flexible, right? But not so flexible as to allow anything to be diffeomorphic if anything else, but it does set up some sort of equivalence relation on things. That brings us to pullbacks, which I'll start again here shortly.